Hello and welcome back. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that nothing looks quite so empty as an empty aquarium, but this is the stage where most people run into problems. Unlike any other pet you're likely to keep at home, fish can't thrive in clean and sterile surroundings. The first and biggest problem for new fish keepers is the toxic pollution produced in a situation known as new tank syndrome. This is the biggest cause of failure for new tanks and it's the hardest part of being a new fish keeper. If you can get over this first hurdle, chances are your aquarium will be with you for a long time. Like us, fish would rather live to a ripe old age and have an immune system to protect them from disease. Although keeping animals in a glass box full of water isn't an entirely natural thing to do, it's the natural processes that take place that are the secret to success. This means that they're naturally on your side and keen to thrive. Keeping fish is all about healthy water. You keep the water and the water keeps the fish. It doesn't matter how clear your water is, water can be crystal clear and still deadly to fish. One of these glasses is filled with water, the other with gin. It's impossible to know which is which. Without using a test kit, it's impossible to know whether your tank is suitable for your fish. It may seem like an unnecessary expense at the outset, but a test kit can save you money as well as the lives of your fish. There's a baffling array of parameters that can be tested, but there's only a handful that are critical at the start. Ammonia is a waste product excreted by the fish. This chemical is harmful and can kill or damage fish, even at low levels. It's removed by bacteria and plant growth. Ammonia levels should be zero in a healthy tank. Nitrite is the result of the breakdown of ammonia by bacteria and is also toxic. High levels can cause cloudiness and odour. It's removed by bacteria and, like ammonia, should be undetectable in a healthy tank. Nitrate is the end result of the chain and is less harmful. It accumulates over time and plants and algae can help remove it, although most aquaria have far higher levels than plants can process, so water changes are needed. Not all fishes are equally damaged by nitrate, but moving fish from low to high levels can be enough to kill them. Nitrate may be less toxic, but is still harmful, especially to sensitive species or those unaccustomed to old water. pH is the level of acidity or alkalinity and is less important to most domesticated fish as long as extremes are avoided. Some delicate species can be choosy, but generally pH is slow to change and, in hard water areas especially, not a cause for great concern. KH is a measure of water hardness and has a role to play in keeping pH stable and allowing filter bacteria to work effectively. KH is the price to be paid for using soft water and in these circumstances may need boosting as part of a maintenance regime. Aim for a minimum reading of between 5 and 10 degrees KH for most fish. So, it's very simple. Fish are normally killed by poor water quality. The secret to healthy fish is good water. That's easier said than done, but the most significant part of this is taking your time to stock any new system. As ours is an old hobby, there's many ways that have been tried to get bacteria thriving in a new tank. Old books talk of adding a small piece of meat. Then, in more recent times, a pinch of fish food. Filter media from an established tank, still a great technique. Hardy fish. And even human urine. Early attempts at bottling bacteria were largely unsuccessful, but times have changed and it's now possible to inoculate your aquarium using a bacterial starter. Indeed, although we'd never recommend them for such use, some manufacturers offer products that claim to offer stocking from day one. Such products are always added just before the first fish and always used in conjunction with a good test kit. Although we try to discourage it, some people will inevitably add fish to an uncycled tank, 
even though it exposes them to harmful pollution. For some, it's a hard habit to break. If you're watching this after losing fish under these kind of circumstances, let's discuss some emergency measures. The solution to pollution is dilution. A partial water change carried out properly is a great way to reduce toxins, be they ammonia, nitrite or nitrate. Liquid ammonia removers can be added to detoxify harmful ammonia. These convert it into less harmful forms that will still show up on a test kit. Chemical filter media can be used to absorb ammonia or nitrite immediately. These may be overwhelmed by high levels, so carry out a water change first. Use a hydra filter. These use a combination of technology and resins to bypass the bacterial nitrogen cycle. In a hobby with more than its share of gadgets, this is actually a game changer. Armed with a bit of knowledge, we're ready to add the first fish to our tank. We've added bacteria over the last couple of weeks and tested the tank for any traces of ammonia or nitrite. We'll stock the tank in a time-honoured way, with small numbers of fish added at intervals, with water testing before every addition. Now, this might sound harsh, but although we like to think of fish keeping as a hobby that the whole family can enjoy, taking your children with you to pick your first fish can be a very frustrating experience. In a shop packed with tanks of colourful and vibrant pets, including Nemo and Dory, the chances are you'll be directed towards a small number of suitable species that may not be the ones that all your family members would choose. There may be tantrums and tears, but it's crucial that the classic mistake of adding too many or too delicate fish is avoided in the early days. Better to go solo on that first mission and then take the kids with you when you can stock more sensitive types. See you next time.